managing security. Now, first, what is SC Linux? So, SC Linux means security enhanced Linux. It is called SE Linux and it is an additional layer of system security apart from Windows fi uh, the, uh, firewall, uh, network firewall. This is a primary goal of SE Linux to protect user data from system services that have been compromised. And most Linux administrators are familiar with the standard user, group, other permission security models. This is a user and group based uh, model known as dis discretionary access control. Now, SE Linux provides an additional layer of security that is object based and controlled by more sophisticated rules known as mandatory access control. So, it provides a security layer for the different services we have. Uh, the different files and directories we have which is accessed by the services. Now for example we have Apache services. Now Apache services need some file to be accessed from different directories. Now they can get the uh, access if we don't have SLNX they can get the access directly to allow remote anonymous access to a web server like Apache server is basically a web server. So to allow the remote anonymous access to a web server, firewall post, uh, firewall port must be open. So what we do for allowing uh, anyone to access our web server, we allow, we open the access for our web server by opening the port now, uh, port for the web server. Like uh, for HTTP for web server, we open the port number 80. Otherwise, nobody can have the access of that service. Now when we allow the services from the firewall, we just allow everything. We can't control that what files and uh, what uh, directories or files can be accessed through that Apache, uh, through that web services. So this gives malicious people an opportunity to crack the system through the security exploit. And if they compromise the web server process, gain its permissions, the permissions of the, uh, the Apache user and the Apache group, then what they can get that that user and group has read access to things like the document root directory as well as uh, the write access to the temp directory, var temp directory and any other files and directories that are worldwide, that are world writable. So if uh, attacker access and compromise the services that means it is get the access of the Apache user and group and it can get access of all the services uh, all the files and directories which is allowed by that user to be accessed it can get access of all those things now when in the SC Linux when we have SC Linux and in and the SC Linux enforcing mode what we get it secures the information it secures the directories or files to be accessed from the remote. As you can see in the image, the uh, when in SC Linux is uh, running, it is in running in the enforcing mode, then only the Apache server is getting the access what we want to give them access. Like only they get the access of the HTML document root directory, they will not able to get the access of temp or where temp directories. So SC Linux is a set of security rules that determines which process can access which files, directories and ports. So very simple, SC Linux defines that what services we are running in our server and those services can access which files and directories and also which port. Every file, uh, process, directory and port have a special security label called as a SC Linux context. And for doing this, for providing the security, SC Linux do what? It, it assign a unique label for every file and directory. It is called SC Linux context. A context is a name that is used by the SC Linux policy to determine whether a process can access a file, directory or port. By default, the policy does not allow any interaction unless an explicit rule grants access. If, they, uh, if, they, if there is no allow rule, no access is allowed. Now many commands that deal with the files, uh, it uses the Z option. Z option for the uh, displaying the SC Linux context. For example, we use ls process uh, ps command to check the process cp command mkdir command with all these commands we use the capital uh, we use the z option which is capital z option this is dedicated for sc linux for example 
So this is our server. For example, you want to see the S Linux things, then you will use capital Z option, capital Z option. Like for example, when you use the ls, it shows the it, it lists the dis directory content. Now it is not showing anything about the uh, S Linux context. But if you want to see the context of S Linux, then what you will use capital Z. and then you can see the label of every file and directory this is the label which s linux provide s linux assign to every directory and depend on the directory location the files will get the label uh, the files actually get the label from the directory so directory get the label be based on the location now this is the root users home directory it is root users home directory and all the files and directories are there uh, uh, here which is under the root users home directory so what is the label it is setting here is admin home t because all these files and directories are belongs to the users root users home directory so it is setting the level as admin home t and for example the web servers directory is under where uh, www and under that we have html now this directory or for example ftp directory we have ftp directory here now ftp directory contain all the files these files are in ftp directory when you check the label for these files so it is a different label we have and that is what it is showing the label of these files and these files are having a label of public content t why it is saying public content because it is under the ftp directory and it is the home directory for the anonymous user and it is the uh, uh, accessible for everyone if you access uh, if you list the uh, files from the home user uh, normal users home directory let's say for example i want to see the home directory of user 2 there is no file or uh, user 1 okay so it is showing this is user home t that means label as users home directory files so it has a label for every file here and these labels are assigned by the s linux assigned by the s linux to every files and directory based on the location based on the directory if it is under the users home directory then you will see this if it is under the directory of home uh, root users home directory you will see admin home t this is public and for web servers you will see uh, the websites of web ser web servers uh, directory is www and under that you will see http files http underscore sys content t this is a label set to this directory html for having a data of web servers http whatever we uh, whatever file we create under this directory it is going to get the label of http sys Uh, http d underscore sys underscore content underscore t. Same as we can use the command ps also and cp mkdi also to see uh, with the uh, we can run it with the z option to see the pro uh, s linux thing. Just like we use it with l, we can use it with the process also. Like I want to see the process in. Uh, executed process so it shows me all the process which we have executed right now or if i add capital z here it shows the label of those process also so we can see the label of that process also these are the label for the process it is set by the s linux it is saying this is the init underscore t process it is the kernel underscore t process and then it is showing the process here so it is also showing and allow, uh, assigning the label for the process also so it do what it provide the security based on the label of the files and directory that whether it is going to be accessed from the uh, services remotely or from the online or from the internet or from the uh, network So it defines these labels through every files and directories. Now, S Linux has different modes. When we install the system, by default, S Linux is installed and enabled. And when it is enabled, it has two modes. And if it is disabled, it will not apply any policies. That means very simple. 
we have two states of SC Linux, enable and disable. Disable it will not do anything, but when it is enabled, it is under two modes. Two modes, that is first is enforcing, that is the default mode. This, this mode is the default mode. And in enforcing mode, SC Linux do what it forcefully apply the policies that if the access is not allowed, then it will not uh, give any access. Then the second mode in enable, in, 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 when it is enable, the second mode is permissive. Now in this mode, SC Linux will not enforce the policies and not deny anything. Instead, it do only, it does only create logs and related to access information. It only generate the logs, notifications that someone is accessing this thing which should not be accessed and this is not a, uh, not a proper access. So it only generate the logs and it will not deny anyone. It will not deny any con uh, any any access, any uh, connection. It only do what? It only generate the logs and notification. Now when AC Linux is enabled, then we can switch, uh, switch between these modes without rebooting. So when it is enabled, so we can change the mode from enforcing to permissive, permissive to enforcing without changing anything, without rebooting the system. But if we want uh, disable or enable it, then we have to reboot the system. For example, if we want to disable the SC Linux, then what we have to do, we have to reboot the whole system so that it will remove the levels of uh, every files and directory. And if suppose it is already disabled, that means no labels are configured, then we have to enable, uh, when we want to enable it, then we have to reboot the system so that it can recreate the labels of every files and directory. So when we disable and enable, we have to enable, uh, we have to reboot the system. But while it is enabled and we have in the uh, permissive mode or enforcing mode, so we can change the modes without rebooting the system. Now to check the current mode, if suppose we want to see what is the current mode, so we can run the command get enforce. This command will show you that what is the current mode we have. So it is showing here that it is in enforcing mode. Now what that means, it is actually in a default mode and enforcing means it will uh, not allow anyone, uh, any other services to access our files and, uh, uh, files and directories. It will enforce the policies. So while it is enabled, now for example, we are having the uh, FTP enabled and if, uh, I, if a client wants to access the FTP services from remote location, so it will force the user to uh, not access the files. Now for example, I will try to access the FTP service from the remote server. I will go to the client machine now. Uh, this is our uh, client machine. and. Uh, this is Linux 2 and we are connected to the server. We can check. So we are connected to the server and the FTP services are running there. Now I will try to access the, uh, uh, I try to access the FTP server. Remember the SLinux Linux is enabled in, uh, enabled in the, uh, uh, the server and also it is on enforcing mode. Now when I try to access, I am getting the access because it is allowed in the firewall. I can log in with the user account and login successful. Till now, it is not affecting. The S Linux is not doing anything. But now, I see there is no file there. Now, I will try to upload a file from here to this uh, to FTP server by uh, by this user account. So it is going to upload in the home directory of this user too. So I will try to upload uh, this file uh, up.txt. So I will use command mput and then I will say up.txt I want to upload. It says yes. Remember by default all the users have permission to upload any file. Now what it says here entering the passive mode but it could not create the file. Now this is because of SC Linux. SC Linux is not allowing anyone that means it is not allowing the FTP services to access the home directory of user 2 
and write the data write the data in users home directory that is user 2's home directory so it is blocking by the srinex because it is in enforcing mode it is not allowing the home directory access for the ftp services even the normal user have the permission it will still not it will still not be able to do that because of the srinex because the srinex in the enforcing mode so you can see here it shows here the graphical because we are in the graphical we can see the alert it shows the alert also there was a message there it shows the alert that somebody has trying to use the ftp services and uh, the sls has blocked that so it shows the notification and also disallow it but when we are in the enforcing mode when when we are in the permissive mode then it will allow the access and only generate the log only generate the notification now this command get enforce to check the uh, current mode uh, and that is enforcing and we can change the mode without rebooting the system so we don't have to reboot the system to change the mode from enforcing to permissive so if i want to change the mode from enforcing to permissive and that is for the current uh, so i can do it by set enforce command now set enforce command when you use zero zero means it is permissive and when we use one it means enforcing so zero means off and one means on so basically one means we are enabling the uh, enabling the enforcing and zero means we are disabling the enforcing and enforcing when you disable the enforcing it will go to permissive mode now i will disable it by using set enforce zero and then when i check get enforce it shows permissive now it is in permissive mode and in this mode it is going to do what it is going to allow the user to upload the file it is going to allow the user to access its home directory now i again come to the client machine and then i will try to log in again with the same user account previously uh, it was not allowing to upload now i will try again i will try to upload again the file same file i say yes and now it is successfully uploaded so it was denying by the slinux because the slinux was in enforcing mode now when you go to server again you will see the notification it generate only the notification it has gone now but we can see the notification under here slinux troubleshooter it shows all the notification which is generated so in permissive mode it only do what it only generate the notification it does not do anything it does not block anything it only generate the notification now i'm opening this and here you can see the notification here it is slinux alert and here you can see it is coming from source vsftpd that is the ftp service and here it is saying that attempted this access which is lock and it is trying to upload the file this up.txt you can see the date and time that in that date and time someone is trying to upload this file on this home directory and it was locked it is not allowed so it has not blocked it it has only done what it has only generated the lock because it is under the permissive mode so this is what uh, enforcing and permissive now this modes we change by using this command and this is changing the command this command is to use to change the current mode now again i will change it to enforcing now this command is to change the current mode it is not the permanent mode permanent mode is the default mode when you reboot the system it will go back to that default mode and that default mode is what enforcing now if we want to see the detail then what we can check se status 
SE status command will show that what is the current status of SE Linux. It is showing the status is enabled and SE Linux file system is mounted on this directory and then SE Linux root directory is this where it has the configuration file. The policy is load, uh, the loaded policy name is targeted. It is targeted policy and the current mode is what? Enforcing and also the config file mode the file or uh, the mode from the file that is that is the default mode and that is the permanent mode so whatever the mode you see from the file it is the permanent mode for the s linux and that is what by default it is enforcing multi layer security a status is enabled policy deny unknown status is allowed then uh, maximum kernel policy version is this 28 this is the version of the policy we have then deny unknown status is saying is, is allowed. So it is allowing the unknown status. It is not denying it. And uh, it is in current mode is what? Enforcing. And the permanent mode is also enforcing. If we change it from this command, set enforce zero if we do. And then we check the status. Then it shows that uh, current, uh, current mode is permissive, but the permanent mode is enforcing. That means when we reboot the system, it goes back to enforce. It goes back to enforcing mode. Now, if we want to change this current mode or the mode from the file, or we want to disable this, then we have to do it from the main configuration file of SE Linux. And that configuration file you will get under this document, this uh, root directory of SE Linux. So if we want to change the default status and we want to disable list, then we can go on to change it from the configuration file which is under this under this root directory we have a file config and under this file we have option here to change the default status right now it is set to enforcing and enforcing means uh, means SLNR security policies are uh, enforced permissive means SLNR prints warning instead of enforcing and disable means no s linux policy is loaded so if we want to disable this here disable and it is it will do what it will disable the s linux so when it is enabled we can uh, change the mode from enforcing to permissive permissive to enforcing without rebooting the system and we can configure it permanently here by editing here under this file we change uh, enforcing to permissive. Now, if you want to disable it, then what we can do? We can uh, we can put disabled here. Now, when we put disabled here, we have to reboot the system so that it will remove all the labels of the system. And the uh, policy type, SLinux type is what targeted means targeted process are protected. We can also use minimal, minimal means modification of the targeted policy. Only selected process are protected. By default, it is going to protect only the targeted process that means which we configure it to protect. Otherwise, the default, by default, it is uh, uh, allow anyone, allow any other process. MLS means multi-level security protection where we can do multi-level security. By default, it is targeted and it will do what? It will, uh, pro, uh, it will uh, protect only the targeted process. So this is how we can do what we can enable or disable the SLNS. We can change the default status of SLNS and also we can manage the current status of SLNS by using the set enforce command. And to check, we can see get enforce command. And to change, we can use this set enforce command. And by default is what? it is enforcing and enforcing will do enforce the policy and not allow uh, if it is not allowed now SLNX context labels this context labels of files and directories determined by their parent directories so that means if we have a web root directory that is var ww html with the context label of http underscore sys underscore content underscore t then all the files and directories inside this directory will have same context label and if label not correct then SLNX will prevent the file access so if all the files which is in under this directory this is the web directory for the website 
they must have the label of http underscore sys underscore content underscore t if the label is not like this then use it is acrylinux will prevent the access and this labels will get uh, the, the files will get this label from the directory it will get it from the parent directory this label is set on this html directory so whatever the file we create under this directory they all will get the same label context but if uh, we have some file here and which is having a different context label then it is not able to access the acrylinux will enforce and it will prevent the access from remote location so when we do copy the files from anywhere or we create new files so it will do uh, pre it will do preserve the file context label but if uh, move the files it will do preserve files context label and the original acrylinux context label will be unchanged that means that means it is decided based on the label of the directory parent directory now for example if you check uh, the label for the directory html so it says the label for this directory is this it is http underscore sys contest and uh, content underscore t so all the files we create inside this directory will get the same label if i check the context of where so it is also same and because of this uh, label of this uh, file uh, this directory this html directory also get the same label now if i check the label for where directory so it is where underscore t now this label is different than this http so this uh, ww directory is getting this label it is a system generated it is generated by the system by default because it is the directory for the website web directory and this is the default web directory for uh, default site so all these directories have the same label now if we create any files we get what we get the same label like if i create any file in this directory right now we check whether we have any file inside it so i will remove this d option so we don't have any file oh okay we have one file fs tab now we can see that file is also having the same label same as the directory parent directories label and if i create any new file also so the it will also get the same label like i will do what i will touch a file under var ww html directory and that is like i will say my web now when i check the label for this directories uh, this file so the label for this file is also automatically configured to http under http uh, http d underscore sys underscore content underscore t so when you create a new files or a directory it is getting the label from the parent directory but if suppose i copy any file from some other directory now for example uh, we check the directory user root home directory for example so all the files here it is getting the label as admin home t now i will try to copy one file from here to where there uh, where html directory so i will copy this file here and this files context label is this admin dot uh, admin home t and then i will do what i will copy the file from root uh not this file i will copy this file linux2.txt from here linux2.txt and i will copy it under var ww html now i copy the file from here here it has a label of admin home t because the file is uh, belong to the home directory of root user admin user now we we copy the file into var html var ww html directory that is the home directory for web root uh, website data now when we check the label for that file which we copied there this is the file 
and you can see it is showing HTTP D. It is showing HTTP D sys contain T because the label is preserved. Uh, it is actually changed. It is not preserving the label previous label that is it was having the home T of admin home T but now it is changed to HTTP D sys contain T because now we did what we copy the file. It was here under the home directory of root user it was showing this label now when we copied it it shows a different label it is it is showing the label according to the parent directory so when we create any file new file or we copy some file from the different location it will change the label according to the parent directory but when we move the file now I will move the file from here and I will move it to this root directory, this HTML directory. I will move this file from here. So what I will do, I will run move command to move the file from root home directory to where www.html. Now when we check it under the root, uh, HTML directory, now we can see here this is the file which we moved but you can see the home uh, the label context is not changed now when it is not changed that means when uh, someone try to access the file when the web service web service try to access the file then it is not going to access the file because it is still saying that the file belongs to admin home t it belongs to use user, uh, root users home directory so the HTTP services will not be able to access this file. So when we create new file or copy, new, copy the file, it will get the label according to the parent directory. But when we move the file, the labels are not correct. It will preserve the previous label and it will use the, uh, use the previous label. Now if the label is not correct, it is not going to be accessed by the HTTP services. So we have to make sure the labels of the files are correct according to the parent directory otherwise it is not going to be accessed by the services SLS will feel that this file belongs to root users home directory and it is not allowed by the HTTP services or any other services to access files from root users home directory so it is not allowing this file to be accessed from HTTP so in this case what we can do we can change the SLinux context label, we can reset the SLinux context label. We can change the uh, label according to the parent directory and we can use the command restore con and this uh, or if we want to change the context label of permanent then we can we, we then we do uh, uh, parent uh, we change the context label of the parent then we do this by using the ch con command but it is not permanent. So if we want to reset the label based on the parent directory then we can use the restore con command. Restore command to change the label. And if we want to create the label then we can use the chcon command. But this chcon command when we use it is not permanent it is actually ter temporary change. For example this change is what? Uh, it is not a right uh, right context label, so we have to uh, fix the right uh, this uh, label here based on the home directory, the parent directory. So we can use the restore con command. It will do what? It will restore the labels of all the files belong to the directory, and according to the parent directory, it will reset the label. For that, we will run restore command, restore con command, and I will use capital R for recursively so that all the files within that directory will do what if they will reset so i will mention i'm mentioning the directory name i'm not mentioning the file name so it is going to reset all the files in it will re uh, relabel all the files according to the parent directory it will restore the con so when you run this comma it will it will restore the label it will fix the label uh, problem this it will change the uh, label of these directories so if i see now now we can see the big file is also having the same label. So this command will do what? It will restore the label. Restore the label according to the parent directory. Now 
uh, we have used the R command. It is recursive, so that everything, every files will be resetted, uh, uh, re, uh, uh, reset the label. But suppose we create the new directory. Now this is the default directory for our web services. Now I created my web service. I, I created my web application, and I have added the web application under this uh, my web directory. or i can say my site directory now this directory i created right now and i want this directory to be accessed i want this directory to be shared by the http services by the web services now when you check the label for this directory what is the label for this directory so we can see it is saying default T. Now, why it is say, saying default T? Because we created the directory under slash, and the slash itself has that label. It is has root dot T. So, what we create under that, it is by default goes for the default T. Now, if I try to put my website data into this directory and try to share this directory through the web services, so SNS will not allow. to access any files from this directory because it is not having the proper label it must have this label to access from web services but it is not having that label so no files will be accessed from this directory if it is not having this label so we can fix the parent label now if i create any file inside this directory like for example i go to that directory my site and then i will touch some files there Uh, file one, file two, file three. Now these all files will get the same label from the parent directory that is default T. So if you check the labels of these all, the directory's label is default T, and when we check the files label under the directory, they also get the same default T label. Now. if uh, we want to share these files we want to use these files for our web application for our web services it is not going to be access because for web services we need to have this label set that is http http d sys content t otherwise it is not going to be access now why it is not getting that label because the label is coming from the parent directory and parent directory is having this default t label so when you create the new directory and you want to uh, create the label for the directory then what we can use the command chcon chcon capital r for uh, the recursively and t for the context label and then you will mention the label which you want to set http d underscore sys underscore content underscore t and i want to set it on this directory now this will set the label and i will use the recursive so it is going to set the label for the files inside the directory also now when you check the label for the directory and all the files you can see the files are also changed and when you check the label for the directory it is also changed now this is not permanent because when you reboot the system it will go back to default t it will go back to default t again or maybe if suppose i do restore the con, if i run the restore uh, con command to reset the labels so i restore con i run the restore con command and then when i check the label you can see it goes back to default again all the files are goes back to default and when you check the directory it also goes back to default so when you restore when you try to restore that means it is like it is like restoring the uh, the label and it do what it change back to the default one why because the label which we change with this command it is not permanent it is actually temporary so if we want to change the label permanently then we have to do it with se manage command
SE manage command is to manage the SE Linux. And this command we can use to change the default context level. Like I want to see the uh, context level, so I will say f context list, and it is listing the whole labels of the files and directory we have. It is listing the files and directories, all the files and directories are context label and it says what file it is. It is a regular file, this is the label it is set and these are the files we have. So it shows the labels of all the files. It lists the all context label. Now to set the context label with using the app, so to set the permanent context label, we can use the se manage command. So for adding it permanently the label, uh, the label for this directory which we have set it by ch phone command, but again it was uh, restored by restore restore con command to the default one. So we want to make it permanent, so we'll use se manage command then what do you want to manage so i want to manage f context i want to add the f context what f context i want to add the t option will define that so httpd underscore sys underscore content underscore t this is the label i want to set and then i want to set it on Then you have to do it like this. So this is what the command to add the context label on a directory by default. Uh, this will be permanent. Now when you run this command, it is going to set the label for that directory. Now when you check the label again, it is still showing this because this is the current status. So when you want to uh, check, uh, we want to restore it, then we will run the command restore cone again for that against that directory with the files. And then we can use it very verbosely, forcefully. And then what? We will run uh, the site name and it is going to restore the, uh, the default context which we have configured by using this se manage command. And now you can see it is changed for the directory and it is also changed for the files inside the directory. It is changed from default T to this HTTP sys content T. Now when we check it, so it shows the HTTP D sys context. Previously when we changed by using the chcon command and when we run the restore con command, it re reset the, uh, the context label to uh, back to default. But now when I run the restore con command, it changes to this, which we have configured by using the se manage command. And also inside the directory, all the files are also set accordingly. So this is how we can manage the labels of the files and directory by using the se manage command. And if you want to restore it, we want to restore or set, uh, reconfigure it. We can use the restore con command. And if you want to set the permanently, then we can use se manage command. And for temporary, we can configure it chcon command. We can use chcon command to set the label temporarily. And for permanently, we can use se manage command. Next is se Linux booleans. These booleans are switches that changes the behavior of the se Linux policy. And se Linux booleans are rules that can be enabled or disabled. So booleans can be enabled or disabled, only enable or disable, and they can be used by security administrator to tune the policy to make selective adjustment. Like for example, we have a FTP server, and FT uh, when the SLNS is in enforcing mode, so the policy of SLNS says that no one can access the home directory of normal users through the FTP services. So we have FTP services running here and when we have the SLinux on uh, the enforcing mode. When it is on enforcing mode, we have seen that normal users are not able to access the home directory of that uh, 
uh, normal users. It is not allowing. It is not allowing the uh, users to access their home directories. Uh, we can see it again. We'll go to the client and see what happens. Again, SMS is on. It is enforcing, and we try to access it from the client side. I want to try to access it through the user account, user two. I can log in easily. I can see what is on on the server. But I will try to log. I will try to upload something. That means I am trying to edit something in the home directory of this user two, and it is not allowed by default. The policy for the S Linux says when it is enforcing, it is not allowing anyone, uh, anyone to access the uh, the home directory of user, uh, the FTP services. Basically, the FTP services are not allowed to access the home directory of users. Now I will try to upload some file from here. Let's say this file. So I will say. I want to upload the file and put uh, Linux 2 dot txt, and it will say yes, you want, and it says could not create file. Why? Because the S Linux is uh, not allowing it to access the home directory through the FTP services. So if we want to change the policy, so those policies are comes as a boolean. Boolean is enable or or, or disable. so booleans are on or off and they decide the policies so if i want to allow the ftp services to access the home directory of users then i have to enable the boolean enable the boolean related to the ftp services and related to the home directory used by the ftp services now if we want to see the booleans then we get the we run the command get se bool command get se bool hyphen a will show you all the booleans All the policy booleans we have with this S Linux. So when you run this, you can see all the booleans, and you can see that some of the uh, most of them is off, and some of them is on. So when it is on, it will allow, and when it is off, it is not allow that things. Now you have to see. You you can see it is for every uh, most of the services. like it is uh, it is doing something for tftp it is doing something for ssh it is doing for sftp it is doing uh, it is doing policies for the s linux users samba rsync it is also for postgre sql it is for mozilla it is for logging it is for uh, http and you can see uh, http is having heavy uh, a lots of policies for this then it has also policies for ftp it is also having the policies for ftp it is having the policies for other services also now if i want to filter it i want to see only ftp then i will do grab only ftp now these are all services related to ftp so what uh, what boolean is blocking the home user uh, the user's home directory access so we can see here it says ftp home dir and that is off and that means this boolean is not uh, this because of this boolean is not allowed ftp services to access the home directory of users now if i want to give the home directory uh, the access of home directory uh, of the users through the ftp services then i just have to enable this boolean we can also see by using the sc manage command as i manage command i want to check booleans i want to list booleans so it also show you the booleans here it also it shows in detail here and it shows two states here that whether it is default what is the default state and what is the current state as you can see here it is showing this the ftp home dir it is state is off and default is also off and what it do it do allow the ftp to home dir that means it will allow the user to access the home directory through the ftp services so here it shows the description also with the boolean with this sc manage uh, boolean hyphen uh, list command it shows all the booleans whether it is off or on and what is the default status what is the current status and also the description that what it is going to do when it is enabled or or disabled so this is the boolean which is not allowing the ftp services to access the home directory of user and that is why the user is not able to upload any file 
So if I want the user to upload the file, then I can do what uh, while the uh, the SNS is in enforcing mode. So what I can enable this boolean. Now for enabling the boolean, we will run the command set se bool. Set se bool hyphen p. That is for permanent, and then we can mention the boolean which we want to change. Now we want to make it on or we want to make it off. Right now it is already off, so I want to make it on. Okay, home dir. It is actually home dir. I I misnamed this. The boolean name must be right. Uh, the name of that boolean is. ftp home dir i name the boolean wrong uh, it uh, actually name it as a context label so ftp underscore home underscore dir i want to make it on now the boolean is on we can verify by getting by running the get se bool command and we can see the boolean is now on now when the boolean is on then what it is allowing the s linux is allowing the ftp services to access the uh, root uh, the user's home directory it was not allowing now we will check it by going to the client now from here under the client you remember it was not allowing to upload the file it was saying could not create the file remember when user try to upload the file with the ftp services so it is the ftp services need to be need to have an access of that home directory of this user and sns is preventing that but now we have allowed it we have changed the policy now what i will try to log in as that user again and then i will try to upload the same file again on the server so it was linux2.txt i say yes i want to upload it and we can see now it is transferred successfully and it is uploaded on the server now so it is uploaded because now the s linux is allowing these ftp services to access the home directory of the user so these booleans define the policies and we can change the boolean status to change the policies and right now it is on so it is allowing we can check it by using the se manage command also and it shows here that it is on uh go to beginning okay it is showing that this boolean is on the current status is on or also the default status is on because uh, when we reboot the system it will again not disable it will still remain on we can do what instead of seeing all these booleans we can do what we can add hyphen c option also it will do what it will show only the booleans which has changed and now you can see it is showing the boolean which we have changed other booleans are on default so it is not showing those booleans it only shows the booleans which we have changed when we use the hyphen c option so this is the boolean we have changed now if we want to make it disable again then again we will use the command set se bool and instead of on we will make it off and now this is what off and now when i see this it says now this is changed and this is what now off others are still on default now when it is off then the users home directory will not be accessed by the ftp services now next is port labeling sns does more than just file and process labeling network traffic is also tightly enforced by the slinux policies and one of the method that slinux uses for controlling the network traffic is labeling the network port for example in the targeted policy port number 22 of tcp has the label of ssh port t associated with it that means slinux knows that this port number 22 is for ssh by the label label is said that ssh underscore port t that means this port is fixed this port is for ssh and if any other services trying to use the port 
then they will not be allowed they will not be allowed and they they are not be allowed as and also for ssh if any other port we try to use then also that will not be allowed because it label all the ports with their respective uh, services so whenever an administrator decides to run a service on a non standard port these are the standard port so when you try to run the non standard port there is a high chances that sns port labels will need to be updated in some cases the targeted policies has already labeled the port with a type that can be used that means it is not only having a default port it is also having the some possible ports available like for example uh, we are having the uh, stdp services so stdp services are having the default port of port number 80 but it also use sometimes some people use these different ports also like 8008 of tcp it is often used for web application and that port is already labeled with stdp port t the default port type for the web server it is also actually labeled as that port in this slinux label uh, slinux labeling we can see the labels of the slinux port by running the se manage port hyphen l and if you want to see only the changed one then we can add hyphen capital c also so i want to see the label for the port so for it uh, i will run the se manage command as the manage command for port and i will say i want to list the ports so you can see these are the services label and these are the ports which is labeled with these services so for example uh, we want to see stdp only so i will go on to filter it i want to see only stdp so we can see here this is the stdp port for the stdp web services and other services of stdp now by default the port is port 80 this is the default port of tcp which uses for the stdp protocol but it is also label it has also labeled these other possible ports like 81 443 for secure stdp 448 8008 8009 8443 or 9 900 so these are also some of the possible ports we have and then some of the uh, there is a caching port 8080 also somebody uses that so these are the ports which is allowed so if we if our uh, ftp F, uh, http services are running with these ports then it will be allowed by the slinux and if suppose we create a website and we use a different port than this then it will not be allowed and slinux will disable the services it will not allow the services to access and it is not allow that services to run that port to be accessed so if we configure our web services in a different port or custom port then we have to update that port under this http port uh, label we have to uh, configure the label for that port also otherwise sms will not allow it if it is in enforcing mode but if it is in, in uh, if it is in the permissive mode then it is not going to deny it is only generating the notification but while it is under the enforcing mode it is not going to allow any other port than these ports now if we want to add some port here then we can add also by using the se manage command so for example i want to add a new port for stdp uh, apart from these ports so what i will do i will run the se manage command for ports i want to add the port and the label uh this will be the label http underscore port underscore t and then i will mention the port of a protocol protocol that means whether it is used going to use tcp or udp so this is for tcp and the new port like for example i want to add 8438453 uh, for example now this new port is also now having the label of stdp port and we can use this port to configure our web services also it is going to add okay now when we check it so we can see that new port is also added here 
the port which we have added here so now this port is also allowed with HTTP now if you want to remove the port then also you can remove and also you can change it you can do modify it like if I want to modify it then I can use instead of A I can use M here and I can modify that uh, I will use like uh, for example Eight four five five. Okay, sorry. Now uh, modify that means changing the port label from uh, one port label to other port label. For example, if you are having this port here, then you can change it here and you can modify it. Like this port is already there under HTTP. It is already there here. I want to change it to other uh, uh, label then uh, I can do that like for example I want to add it to HTTP underscore cache underscore now this is the label I want to change the label for this port which is already there in this so it is going to change it is going to remove from the HTTP port it is going to go into this cache So we can move, we can modify the port label from one label to other label. Now this label is changed to other service. Now previously it was here under the HTTP port. Now I've modified it to, uh, uh, to go to this label. Now if we want to remove it, we want to delete the label, then simple we have to just give instead of M or A, we give D here and it is going to delete the uh, port from that label or label from that port. Now it is removed and now there is nowhere this port is there. It is not in this label and not in this label. So this is the port labeling we have. Now troubleshooting SVNS issues. What should be done by SVNS prevent access to file or server? Now when it is preventing, now someone, if suppose you don't know about SVNS, you will not understand what is happening because you configure the things correctly, but still it is not going to have access. You configure FTP services very perfectly. You configure the web services very perfectly, but still you are not getting the access. And if you don't know about SLNS, you will say, we don't know what is happening. So there is what? There is SLNS and you have to look for SLNS if something is not, uh, it is not allowing or preventing. So there is a sequence of steps that should be taken when the, this occurs. So if suppose you know the SLNS is there and maybe the SLNS is preventing the uh, access, then these are the steps we should follow. First. Before thinking of making any adjustment, consider the SLNS may be doing the job correctly by prohibiting the attempted access. So before doing any changes, we should assume, assume that, okay, SLNS is prohibiting the step, uh, access. It is prohibiting the permitted access. So if a web server tries to access the file in home directory, this could signal a, uh, signal a compromise of the service if web content isn't published by user. So if access should have been granted, then additional steps need to be taken to solve the problem. So if suppose some, uh, if suppose web services are trying to access the home directory of user, that means it is somebody is trying to access the, uh, it is somebody is compromising the web servers and trying to use the, uh, access the user's data. If it is not published and if we have published the data from the home directory, then the additional steps has to be taken. That means we have to manage the labels of the files so that it is going to be accessed from the home directory also. The most common SNS issues in an incorrect file, to, file context. And this can occur when a file is cre uh, created in a location when, uh, with one file context and moved into a place where a different uh, file context is expected. And it most cases, in most cases, running restore con will correct the issue. 
and correcting the issue in this way has a very narrow impact on the security of the reset of rest of the system so mostly this uh, label problem will be there and when we do when we face the uh, we will face the problem when we move the file when we copy the file we don't face the problem when we move the file we face the problem so mostly restore con will do the job it will restore and set the labels again then another remedy for the too restrictive access could be the adjustment of a boolean for example the boolean for ftp d a non right boolean controls the whether anonymous ftp user can upload file and this boolean would have to be turned uh, turned on if it is desirable to allow the anonymous ftp user to upload files to server and adjusting the boolean requires more care because they can have a bad a broad impact on the security so mostly when you are not getting the access that means you are because of the boolean the policies so you have to make sure that you are enabling the boolean but when you are enabling the boolean remember you are changing the policies and you are changing the policies that means it can be a risk then it is possible that the slinux policy has a bug that prevents the legitimate access so slinux since the slinux has matured this is a rare occurrence this is very rare occurrence that slinux policies have a bugs and when it is clear that the policy bug has been identified then contact the red hat support to report the bug so it can be resolved it is rarely rarely you will see the bug it is very matured slinux policies are there but in case you face this then you should report it to the red hat and then they will do resolve the problem and it will also resolve for others now for monitoring the slinux violation monitoring the violation that means to see the logs and notification this is uh, the 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 se the se troubleshoot server package must be installed to send the slinux messages to where log messages so if you want to see the messages under the where log messages file then you have to install the set trouble uh, se troubleshoot server package and this se troubleshoot server listens for audit messages in where log audit audit dot log and send a short summary to where log messages and the summary includes unique identifiers that is uuids for slinux violation that can be used to gather the further information violation that means if someone uh, someone try to access the slinux uh, try to use some services and which is not having the access it is violating the policies then the logs will be generated to check all the incident we should check by using the command se alert now we have a graphical tool also but if you want to do it command line then we have this command se alert and we do it with the a option to this audit file and to check the specified specific incident first get the uuid first get the unique uu uh, uuid from this file or the messages file and then you go to that uh, you get the uh, uuid from the messages and then you can check the se alert command by using the se alert command hyphen l option you can use the uuid to see uuid to see the detail information you this is the command line things but if you want to do it graphically then slinux troubleshooter is there for example we have a graphical interface then we can go on to use this slinux troubleshooter which is under this sundry we have this slinux troubleshooter when you open this it will show you the slinux messages related to the violation like for example the last violation it is showing here uh, because after that we have enabled the access so it is showing here that this is this is done here the vs ftpd is uh, a, this service is doing what something it is actually attempting to access and what it is doing it is creating the file this thing was happened last time and it was created it was not block now this is the last log but if you want to see the more then we can go on to see list all alerts and it will show you all the alerts what happens it shows all the alerts what happens to this uh, slinux like for example i want to see this so i will i will do what i will double click on it it goes on to show me this that this happened sometime it was lock uh, if you want to allow the ftp home dir then you can do this and it is also showing the detail information about it that what you should do 
to do this or to do allow the access if it is blocking and if you want to see the detail you can go on to see the detail view here graphically that it is saying the sms is preventing the access and it is preventing this file to be created this is this is happens when we first time trying to upload the file while our boolean is set to off so it says if you want to allow this then you have to enable the boolean which boolean this boolean it is giving you the solution and it is also showing you the command that what command you should run then also it is showing about the plugins you want to allow permanently then you can do this then also about the catch hall and this is the detail information it is showing now this is graphical if it is not available the graphical is not available then we can go on to see the command line in a command line we can check the files by using the se alert command this is the command line com uh, this is a command line tool to see the alerts which see which we have already seen in the uh, uh, from this uh, graphical tool now this will show you all the alerts because all the alerts are generated in the audit logs it shows the all alerts here it shows all the alerts here till now and if we want to see this is also going to be uh, uploaded in uh, updated in the var messages so we can check that also where log messages and in that also we will see the logs there related to sc linux and we can see the sc linux related uh, uh, troubleshoot sc troubleshoot logs here and we can see this logs are related to ftp now if we want to see the detail log then what we have to do we have to get the uh, we have to get this uuid a unique uuid now it is it is also showing us that what we can do we can use this command to see the detail it is saying the message is saying slx is preventing the user the ftp services vs ftpd from creating a uh, create access on this file up.txt it is showing this message here but if you want to see the detail then what we can use this se alert command with l option and with this unique uuid so i will do what i will run this i will close this var messages and i will run that se alert command with that unique id to see the detail information and this is the detail information about that unique error and it is showing here that slinux was uh, preventing the access for this file it was created here and what should we do we should enable this boolean or for full access we should do this and it is showing the detail information that what we should do so this is how we can see the uh, logs we can see the alerts for the sc linux to prevent the access and we can also monitor it that who has access what and what has been prevented and what has been uh, allowed we can see it on var messages and in detail we can see by the using by using the unique uuid and if we are having the graphical interface then we can go on to see this slinux troubleshooter and we can see all the logs here so this is what the slinux secure enhanced linux it provide the additional layer for securing our linux system services and files and for files and directories which is going to be accessed from the services through the network we can change the policies by using the by changing the booleans and we can change the label context for every files and directory by using the uh, 
SE manage command. SE manage command is to manage the SE Linux. So this is what the SE Linux we have, and this is how we can manage the SE Linux uh, from our to our Linux system.